Okay, sub basses are very simple to make, usually just a deep sine wave, but I like to add in a little bit more tonality to them to make them fill out the sound a bit more. So make a combinator, call it sub, and we're gonna make a Thor instance, initialize it, and open it up. Full sustain, and I'll add in some notes now. There's on sub bass notes. Now, a well produced sub bass is kinda like a cantaloupe. Big, filling, and first introduced to North America by Christopher Columbus. So in that vein, um, we're going to have three analog oscillators with a three octave spread. Make the middle octave one in slot three. So take that one down one and this one down two. So this one's the kind in the middle. And this is because now we can use the mixer to bring the signs that are either side of it down in volume by about 15 decibels. So if we solo it out, just so you can hear the sub on its own. Oh, put it back there. Oh, make sure they're on sine waves as well. That might help. There we go. We just bring this down and run them through. There it is. You see the most, the majority of the tone is coming from this analog oscillator here, whereas these two are just adding in that little bit of extra tonality. Now, if you prefer it pure, then by all means, go ahead and ignore me. No, it's fine. Really, I don't mind. Next up, a maximizer, just to boost the volume a bit. With a quarter input gain. And then, if we drag this to the top so we can see the signal chain, as I like to do, we're gonna create a compressor. Now, do you remember how to link it up? We're gonna link it to the drums so we can side chain the sub bass as well. From the spider splitter, we're going to go for it with another output into the combi input, the sub, then from the two devices into the side chain in here in the compressor. Now, if we take a listen, if we solo out the beat and the bass and bring that ratio all the way up to full and the threshold all the way down. For a sub, it's good to make it a really over-exaggerated squashing effect so it properly shakes those speakers and bring the attack all the way down as well. Now the last issue here is you can hear some slight clicking from the notes and from the sidechain compression and it's very messy in the top end as a result. So to remove that, we're going to right click and create an ECF42 envelope controlled filter. Let's bring that up to the top on LP24, so it's a deeper filter, and bring that frequency right down to about 40-ish. You can hear that gets rid of that clicking. So without it, it's clicking, and with it, no such thing. If we take it too low though, it starts removing too much of the bass, so make sure you don't get rid of too much of it. Incidentally, just so you know, that clicking is caused because with a synth as deep as this, the sound waves are really long, and it's being taken to zero volume before the wave has had a chance to naturally come to an end of its cycle. On a digital system, this results in that popping sound you could hear. So there we have it, a bass as dirty and dancy as a subwoofer made out of manure, a lead synth that's one with the bass like a zen dubstep master, and a sub bass that just give me an excuse to say bass again in this paragraph. Bass. Tune in tomorrow for day three where we'll start looking at some pads for those inevitable prog house breakouts. See ya!